The year is now 1799, and Joseph Proust found that chemical compounds always contain the same elements in fixed ratios by mass. For example, water is always 11% hydrogen and 89% oxygen by mass, no matter where you get that water from. Let's try to recreate an experiment similar to his. We now know that copper two oxide, also called cupric oxide, has a formula of CuO, one copper atom and one oxygen atom. If it's heated in a current of hydrogen, a reaction occurs in which we are left with a sample of copper metal. The oxygen is driven off. Now, let me write some data from two different experiments of his. So in experiment one, let's say we have 2.750 grams of lab-made copper two oxide and the oxygen's driven off. We would be left with a sample of 2.197 grams of copper and that difference, this number minus this number, would be the amount of oxygen that we originally had in our original sample, 0.553 grams. Then in a second experiment, we obtain a sample of 20.00 grams of naturally occurring copper two oxide, and we make it undergo the same chemical reaction. We find that we're left with 15.98 grams of copper, and once again, we can calculate this difference to determine that our original sample had 4.02 grams of oxygen. What's the big deal with these numbers? Well, Let's calculate the percentages by mass of copper and of oxygen in the original samples. Two point one nine seven grams divided by two point seven five zero grams times one hundred, we had 79.89% of copper in our original copper two oxide. And the difference between 100% and 79.89 is 20.11% was our mass of oxygen in our original copper two oxide. Now, same calculation with our second sample. We found that we had 15.98 grams of pure copper divide it by our original 20.00 grams, multiply it by 100, we have that same percent by mass, 79.89%. In other words, we had a lab-made sample of copper two oxide, and we had a naturally occurring sample of copper two oxide, and we calculated percent by mass of both copper and of oxygen in the original sample, and the percent by mass is the same. These ratios of copper and oxygen are in fixed ratios in these compounds, regardless of where we or Joseph Proust obtained our samples. Proust performed similar experiments on copper carbonates, various iron sulfides, two tin oxides, all with the same results. The masses of elements in compounds are in fixed ratios. What does this mean for the structure of an atom? Well, whatever the structure of the atom is, seems to obey rules about ratios and proportions described by Joseph Proust's law of definite proportions. If you want a moment to propose your own atomic structure, pause now because I'm about to show you some of mine. First is the lock and key model, inspired by Jeffrey's affinity table from 1718 and early ideas that substances prefer certain reactions. So maybe atoms are like tiny geometric blocks, each with specific protrusions and indentations like Legos. When they combine, they fit together perfectly, explaining why elements react in fixed ratios. Maybe certain atoms can form stable compounds only because they fit together just right. If water is always the same percentage of hydrogen and oxygen by mass, Maybe it's because hydrogen atoms have too little protrusions and oxygen has holes that they can squeeze in. 
And second is the orbital sphere model. This is inspired by alchemy and celestial mechanics. Maybe instead of solid, indivisible atoms, each atom has a central core surrounded by smaller particles in fixed stable orbits. These orbits can hold a certain number of particles, forcing elements to combine in strict ratios. Maybe water is 11% hydrogen and 89% oxygen by mass, for the same reason that Earth only has one moon and Mars has two. Maybe celestial mechanics applies to atoms. We still have a long way to go to figure out the structure of the atom, but if you have come up with any atomic structures that fit our data so far, I'd like to hear about them in the comments. The more ludicrous, the better. Thanks for watching Chemistry in a Nutshell.